Serbian tennis legend Novak Djokovic has been the object of many vaccine advocates' frustrations over the past couple of years as the Wimbledon champ continues to refuse the COVID vaccine. Of course, it's his choice as to whether he gets it or not, but he runs the risk of not being able to play in the tournaments such as the US Open. Today, we are discussing Daniel Medvedev's recent comments surrounding Djokovic. Stay tuned. Let's get straight into it then. What did Medvedev have to say? After winning his seventh Wimbledon singles title, title this summer, Novak Djokovic will unfortunately have to sit out the upcoming US Open due to his stance on the COVID vaccine. Having won 21 Grand Slam titles so far over his career, he would have hoped to have drawn level with Rafael Nadal at Flushing Meadows this week. Alas, he will have to pick up another major elsewhere. Many people have suggested that the US government should allow Djokovic to take part, but others have suggested this wouldn't be the right approach, as you cannot bend the rules for one individual. One of those people is Daniel Medvedev, current world number one. He has claimed that it would send the wrong message and as a Russian who has been affected by the recent rule changes regarding Russian athletes due to the Ukraine war, he said, if we change the rules, there will be those who will rebel because they are banned from entering the country so they cannot work. Medvedev, who is the defending champion, went one further by saying, I don't want to talk about the reasons for these decisions because many people died during the pandemic, but it is completely joke of decision as to whether he gets vaccinated or not. Many scientists have suggested that as a professional sportsman, he is at minimal risk from COVID, so if he doesn't want to get the vaccine, that is his prerogative. What do you guys think of Medvedev's words? What else has Medvedev had to say then? Stay tuned to find out. Well, as much as the Russian might not agree with Djokovic's stance on the COVID vaccine, he has admitted that he will miss the Serbian at this year's US Open. Speaking earlier this week, he revealed that he's actually disappointed that his old rival won't be around to push him for the second US Open in a row. Of course, he is probably also a little happy as Djokovic would have almost certainly come into the event as favorite, and Medvedev went on to say, I mean, I wish he would play here. We saw it in Wimbledon. He didn't play many tournaments this year. He came there, he won. And whilst his own rivalry with Djokovic is set to really take shape, Medvedev went on to discuss Novak's huge rivalry with Rafael Nadal, saying, the rivalry against Rafa is really, I feel like, heating up in a way. 22, 21, a joke of a number. It's a pity he's not here. It would be a great story, I think, for tennis. And of course, he's correct. These past two US Opens and the Australian Opens, which he hasn't been invited to for the past couple of years, could have a serious impact on who finishes their career as the all-time record Grand Slam winner. Medvedev also went on to say that as much as he would like to have Djokovic there, it's American government rule. Who do you think will finish with the most Grand Slams. Next up, a US tennis star has spoken out about Novak's ban. Stick around. Maybe one of the most aptly named tennis players of all time, American player Tennis Sandgren, has pledged his support for Novak Djokovic. As we move even farther away from the pandemic and rules are relaxed even more, it seems even more silly that the superstar tennis player has been banned from taking part in another one of the year's four major tournaments. The US Open will be the second major he has missed this year after the Australians disinvited him. But Sandgren has called out his fellow pros on the tour, who appear to have been pleased with the Serbians' omission. Djokovic himself was irked by those in the game who seemed happy he wouldn't be taking part, saying, tennis is selfish in the past. But Sandgren had his back, saying, maybe some are happy that Novak Djokovic will not be in New York, but I am saddened by the way some have behaved. Everything is sad, especially that the organizer of the US Open did not do enough for Novak. Sandgren suggests that the event's organizers could have done a lot more, and he wasn't convinced by what he sees as them claiming otherwise. He referenced the fact that such an important event could possibly have the power to change things or at least lobby for an exemption, but it wasn't to be, sadly, for Novak. Rafael Nadal also appeared to echo Sangren's sentiments, saying, From my personal perspective, it is very sad news. What do you guys think? Elsewhere, Emma Raducanu has been discussing her US Open title defense, Stay with us. British number one, Emma Raducanu, believes that there is only one way to approach her US Open title defense, which is by using the positive energy from the place. Of course, Raducanu was just 18 years old last autumn when she shocked the world by claiming her maiden major, and she goes again later tonight, August 30th, in her first match of the tournament against Elise Cornet. And speaking in the build-up to the tournament earlier this week, Raducanu said, You're just starting from scratch. I need to discard any pressure 
pressures there are from the outside. You face the person in front of you, and I know people will want to beat me, but I've got to stay on it and stay super focused. This is a great way to approach the tournament, and she will be hoping to put the disappointment of Wimbledon firmly in her rearview mirror once she takes to the court at Flushing Meadows. As British number one, she would have been hoping, and possibly expecting, to go a lot further in her home tournament, but she ultimately flattered to deceive at SW19. Raducanu will join a whole host of other Brits who are in action in New York, including Wimbledon semi-finalist Cameron Norrie as well as Dan Evans, with all three taking to the court on Tuesday. Of course, Andy Murray is already safely through and will play his second round match on Wednesday, August 31st. Who do you guys see winning the US Open? Some slightly bizarre news from the US Open now. Don't go anywhere. 16-year-old Czech tennis sensation Sarah Balek is at the center of controversy after appearing to have her backside groped by both her father and her coach following her win in qualifying for the US Open. The youngster went straight over to the pair to celebrate after beating her opponent to qualify for her first US Open, but the win was immediately overshadowed by the incident, with many fans instantly calling the pair out for what they see as a pretty creepy turn of events. She had just beaten Britain's Heather Watson, so went straight to her father, Yaroslav, who embraced her but left his hand inappropriately close to his 16-year-old daughter's backside. She then moved on to be congratulated by her coach, Jacob Cahoon, who appeared to actually grope her directly on the buttocks. Fans who noticed the whole incident were outraged, with some suggesting that there was absolutely no reason to touch a 16-year-old girl on her butt like that, which is very hard to disagree with. Others suggested that the video got worse as she progressed down the line, but some Czech Twitter users revealed that it is pretty common in Czechia, also suggesting that many men just don't think about it in a sexual way. I mean, it's still a little creepy, whatever way you look at it. What do you guys make of this? And finally, a historic doubles pairing is set to take to the US Open court. In what will surely be an emotional farewell, Venus and Serena Williams are set to pair up in what will almost certainly be their final major tournament. The most famous and successful siblings in tennis history will take to the court later this week after being extended an invite to appear, which they duly accepted. In what will probably be their final US Open, they actually stand a decent chance of getting quite far if their previous form when competing together is anything to go by. They are currently 14-0 in Grand Slam doubles finals, which is actually the best unbeaten record in tennis history. They have also won three Olympic golds as a doubles pairing, so it's safe to say they know each other's games inside and out. When they turn out together later this week, it will be their first appearance since the 2008 French Open. They will face Czech pairing Lucy Hrdeka and Linda Noskova, so here's hoping they can bag one more for old time's sake. What chance do you guys give them? As usual, thanks for dropping by today and remember to tune in again next time when we will be discussing all sorts of other fun bits. And why not do us a big favor by liking and sharing today's video with any tennis enthusiasts you might know of. Bye guys!